<laughs> All right. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the From the Farmyard podcast. And on today's episode, we're going to be covering uh, how to start seeds indoors, the items that you need, um, just go over the setup, basic setup. You don't have to have like a extravagant setup when it comes to starting seeds, just you get, you get the basics and you're good to go. Um, but when it comes to starting seeds indoors, it can be a great head start to your growing season because if you're uh, <clears throat> like me in a zone where my last frost date is in May, I start my seeds indoors early because I don't want to direct sow outside in my garden because then I would have to wait how many more weeks till those plants come up. And then till they start producing, it's just like takes too long. So to give me a head start, I always plant, we always plant indoors uh, a couple weeks before the last frost date. That way our plants are ready to go outside into the ground. I have not started a lot of seeds indoors <laughs> or in a greenhouse period i mean i did corn last year but that was dr basically direct sown into a bed um right. and his his zone is different his frost state's different than mine we <clears throat> talked about this in last episode i think it was or the episode before yes. that i don't know it was in one of the episodes guys we have a we have a playlist. i made a playlist yes <laughs> a gardening playlist so all of the gardening episodes For will all, be in yeah. there all, all of the gardening episodes <laughs> and we, we have two did playlists and we're filming long before this is right. actually released. Right. So I so. don't know. I don't know if it was last episode, the episode before that. I think it was the episode <laughs> before last episode, but that doesn't matter. It was one of the past episodes. Okay. <laughs> Just we're going with that. Uh, We've talked about this can, before. <laughs> there. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> you can start seeds in anything, really. I mean, I don't do. A lot of I don't use the plug trays because my hands are too fat and they end up breaking the seedlings off anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that that's not enough space when you're dealing with nightshades, particularly tomatoes, just because oh. I mean, they grow so much faster. <clears throat> so I prefer whenever I'm starting anything indoors, I use uh, solo cups because right. they're cheap. They're easy. You can reuse them multiple seasons in a row. <laughs> And it's when it comes to like, <clears throat> right, when it comes to starting seeds indoors, there's like a lot of different containers you can use. You could get a cup like you do, drill a couple holes, put a couple holes in the <clears throat> bottom. There's your little, little plant pot. It's perfect. <laughs> or yeah. you can do like little starter actual trays with like multiple like cells. Like there's <clears throat> a lot of different options when it comes to that. It lets you start more. But like you said, I think you said, I don't know, <laughs> the solo cups is a decent amount of room in there. So it gives the plant a lot of space to expand and grow at the roots. Yeah. So that seed can be in that cup for a longer period of time. Whereas if you had a smaller um, uh, plug cell tray. plug tray, yeah, if you had a smaller one, <laughs> whatever it's called. I don't know. <laughs> Today is not the day, people. <laughs> the brain is not braining. We're just going with it, okay? <laughs> if you have a smaller area that you are planting your seeds in, obviously you're going to need to... The, the roots are going to grow bigger and bigger. And then what will happen <laughs> is if, if the roots... Sorry. You're fine. <laughs> Okay, get back on. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> the roots will keep growing, get bigger and bigger, but you're still in a small cup. So, if you start it too early, your seeds too early on in the season, um, <clears throat> you may be forced to repot so the plant can continue growing its roots and the plant can have more space to get bigger but you know think about that ahead of time i mean if you're going to start 
like <clears throat> really early before you know the last frost date before you have to plant in your garden uh maybe start in a bigger pot that way your plant can just have more space to grow yeah and a good medium for that is like i said the solo cups because it's big enough for the roots of tomatoes <clears throat> that's just what i'm using it as an example it's big enough for the roots of the tomato plant to grow without it being stunted and without you transplanting it too many times. And I'll let them get a little bit taller. They, uh, I'll let them get as tall as they're going to get, obviously, but I'll bury the plant halfway in the ground mm -hmm. and let, let it stick up only that little bit so it can develop more roots, get even stronger. <clears throat> and that's just how I do it. Um, I prefer the solo cups, like I said, or, Anything you can start them in a kiddie pool that you have in your greenhouse and you can transplant them from that into the garden. Exactly. You can take them, <clears throat> you can do five gallon buckets. You can do a big um, rubber made container. The endless, the options are endless. You can start them in anything. So get creative, find out what works. I am going to say this. If you're going to get the, our dollar general had them, but they're like the really big, trays that have like 72 cells mm -hmm. and it has like the tray at the bottom and you can put like the little cover on it for like a little miniature greenhouse <clears throat> i ended up cutting all of mine into manageable size pieces because i think it gives it to you in like a i don't know the exact number but it gives you to you in longer than what it is and it's like three different trays together i just cut each of those so they're easier to trend like easier for me to carry in and out whatever and <clears throat> just so i'm not like breaking half the tray if something happens like right. if i'm trying to pull one out and the tray falls i might only lose five or six plants instead of right. the entire 72 count mm -hmm. um but we are going to well we have as of we have not as of filming this, but when this goes up, we will already have uh, Instagram live up on our account with the how to start tomatoes in well, how to start tomatoes before your last frost date um, indoors. So that'll be going up, I think, the 15th. So if you're looking back for dates, the 15th. And I think this is the last Saturday of the month. I don't know what the date is. <clears throat> Uh, so that's containers. There's a lot of different things you can plant seeds in. It doesn't really matter. Just lots of different places you can put seeds in. Next would be soil. Soil is something that you need to start seeds. Do you want to go over that? Yeah, I can. And explain um, it a little bit because I think you can explain it better than I can. <laughs> they, whenever you're looking at things and you can ask people, they're going to say a seed starting mix is the best thing, which it probably is the best thing. But if you're transplanting and all that, I use whatever thing, whatever I have available, whether compost, which is mainly what I have available. So I <laughs> really only use compost, right. but the compost works great. And you're not, I garden all organically, so we get a mushroom compost from a local place, and it's gr it grew everything last year. It fed the corn, <clears throat> and corn are heavy feeders, but it fed them amazing. The tomatoes did fantastic, and I started seeds and everything. I mean, if they're if you're planting a seed d down into the ground, not any more than an inch, because that's not usually what seeds take. Um, you can, when you're moving things and poking the hole, if you're covering it back up and there's like a big piece of mulch, don't put that directly on top of the hole, put some lighter stuff on top just so the seed can emerge and not be blocked by that and have to go around. It takes, it won't stunt them, but it's just easier. And if you don't think about it, or if your soil's broken up fine, it doesn't really matter, but it might save some right. stunting later. Right. Right. <clears throat> Did you uh did you say this like there's a couple options for soils, correct? There are you can get the regular garden mix, potting mix, um from Lowe's, seed starting mix you can get from Lowe's. 
I just get mine from a local place. It's it's cheaper. I don't know if we talked about this. I'm pretty sure we did. It's mm-hmm. cheaper to buy from a local place for me than to go spend two hundred dollars on a ba- on bags of soil just to top everything off. So I just prefer doing local, or if you can make your own, even better than right. local. But up to you. It's whatever options that you have available. But I would look around and see if there's any places, um, landscaping companies, things like that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So what we used to, uh, just recently, I tried to go like microgreens <clears throat> just for fun because I'm literally like waiting for spring and I want to see green in my little growing area over here. I want to see green. <laughs> so I tried uh, microgreens. Mm-hmm. Mine aren't really doing anything, which is kind of sad, but <laughs> we'll try again. It's fine. <laughs> we used um, starting mm-hmm. soil. Which, it, it works good. But I think what we do is we will mix the starting soil with um, some other dirt. Ooh, there's something with that whenever you're potting, like whenever you're taking the soil mm-hmm. with the, whenever you're planting, uh, soil the starting soil that you get from the store is really dry. Like puffy, dusty, yeah. really, really dry. Whenever you're planting your seeds, you need to mix it with water. Because if you if you don't mix it with water and you just put the dirt and then you water, the water will actually if I'm if I'm correct on what I'm saying, the water will sit on top and it won't actually like soak in all the way because the soil is just so dry. Yeah, um, something can, like if that. Yeah, you, along the same lines. If you're doing um, like if you water your garden all year long and you don't water it at all the rest of the year and you're not getting any rain it's really dry and it can become hydrophobic so that means that resist. the word that i'm looking for is gone resist water uh it's water resistant at that point and i've heard people say that you can add very like a little bit of dish soap to your water and spray it like that and it like helps it or what i prefer to do is i haven't watered my soil at all we've gotten a decent amount of rain though so i'm not too incredibly worried but we are going to, what I'm going to start doing before I plant in that, probably about a week before, I'll water that soil twice a day, making sure that it's getting moist. I'll till every, well, mine's in beds, but I'll like mix everything up really well before I water again and then water twice a day, like I said. And then I'll be able to start in that and the soil's nice and moist. And if you're starting seeds anywhere, water beforehand so you're not watering and pushing the seed down further into the ground Mm -hmm. and it's not being displaced um just a little pro tip there so but yeah definitely water your soil yeah yeah whenever your plant whenever you go to plant water it on your soil because it is really dry and it's like there's a consistency like if it if it clumps up in your hand you could form like a ball like obviously not wet to the point where it's like mud Mm -hmm. but not dry to the point where it's still dusty it has to be wet enough where like if you like can make a ball in your fist it'll that's like good enough apparently but that goes along with watering obviously water your plants you you kind of get an eye for it like obviously if if your plant looks like it's drooping a little bit it might need some water think about when the last time you watered it so water your plants because that's that's what helps it uh germinate obviously it helps it grow and a good rule for that that I've read is, and seen and actually applied to my garden. The first two weeks while seeds are coming up and sprouting, germinated, germinating, water them every day. If you're getting rain, of course, don't. But water them every single day. They need to stay moist for them to germinate. And then as your plants are older and they can deal a little bit more with it not being watered every day, because you can actually damage them and they can start molding, they can start rotting, things like that after that point. And, it's, and I, that's why I use about two weeks because it's a good, it's just a good period for me to do. And you can, I don't know where this was going. <laughs> after that water every two to three days, depending if you're not getting water, like if you're not, if it's not raining to every two to three days is a good starting point and then you can always like stick your finger down in the dirt don't just feel the top little bit because that is going to be dry feel down to the very bottom and see because you do not want your plants to start getting root rot root rot is not fun and it will kill your plants very slowly 
the roots will rot, obviously, and then it'll just right. kill the rest of from there. So, so w- with root rot, make mm-hmm. sure that if you're when you're watering with your containers, make sure there's holes in the bottoms of your containers. So, like you plant with the solo cups, you put holes in the bottom of the containers. That way, the the water can you know sift through. And it'll water the plant and the soil. The soil will soak up what it needs, and then it'll let loose any extra. And then that goes through the holes. Yeah. And then if you don't have holes, I mean, obviously that can cause root rot because the water will just sit at the bottom. Because obviously yeah. you're watering from the top and it goes down. So. And when I'm watering, and I've also read this, like when you're watering adult plants and seed, I mean, it's we're not talking about adult plants really, but might as well say this. If you're watering seedlings or adult plants don't i mean if it's pooling at the top it's not necessarily a bad thing but let it drain all the way through and i will water it two or three times if it does that just so it's getting where it needs to be or i'll just water a lot more because when my corn was growing last year the first time there was a lot of variables going wrong with it but i will water it two or three times a day no two times a day not any more than that once in the morning, once in the afternoon, if the soil is not holding a lot of water. And then after I've done that for about five days, it'll hold enough water. After that, it just was a little bit hydrophobic. So, Right. So next on the list, you have your container, you have your soil, <clears throat> you watering your plants. Next uh, can be lighting. Uh, now, obviously... If you're planting your plants outside, they're going to have sunlight. But if you're starting indoors, you need a um, you need light, a, a form of light. There's there's a couple ways you can do it. Obviously, you could plant on your windowsill probably, and it'll grow with sunlight. But if you're doing it like we do, we grow in our basement. Um, and what we have is there's different types of lights you can buy. You can buy grow lights that are like specific for plants but there's like cheaper options you can do as well uh and i think one of the best options and what we use is we use um uh fluorescent light like tubes so it'll be a long tube you can get them at walmart you can get them at your like they're pretty common you can buy them a lot of places so they're just tube lights and then we set those you know Obviously, you don't want them too close to the plant where they're, like, burning them, but you need to have them up off the plant enough that they're able to grow. But those work well, so it's a cheaper option for growing if you don't want to, you know, spend out and get grow lights. But I've never tried grow lights either, so I don't know what's better, what works better. So Yeah. I prefer sunlight, natural sunlight, so I'll put them in a window or... And this kind of goes into our next topic is making sure that your seedlings are strong enough to be able to be pl- planted outdoors, well, transplanted outdoors. Um, if you're growing them in containers indoors where you're not getting wind, you're not getting heavy rain down upon them, well, rain, mm-hmm. um, run your hand over the top of them to s- simulate it like being windy and that will actually strengthen the stalks um another thing you can do which i do is i bring mine outside every day and i will let them get acclimated even when they're little i'll start when they're when everybody when everything's emerged and i will bring them outside all the way up into them being transplanted as long as it's warm enough and then i'll let it get a little bit cooler in the afternoon like we had a high of i think 60 or 70 today and it's going to go back down to, I believe, 40 or high 30s. I would, like, if this was happening and I already had seeds, I would let it get down into, I'd probably do mid 40s. Mm-hmm. Just let them get on the verge of not being able to survive it and then bring them back in. Just so they're ready for all types of weather. And again, and again I'll run my hand over the top of them three or four times a day just for the wind, just to simulate the wind. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just getting your plants used to that because obviously the reason you're starting indoors is to you're putting your plants in a protected uh, atmosphere. You're getting them they're in a you know lighted they're they're watered regularly. Whereas if you planted them outside, it's controlled. Yeah, it's just a control for them. 
exactly. If you planted them outside, it could not be sunny one day, or it could not be rainy one day, or obviously. But whereas if you started in a greenhouse, or if you started in, you know, your little setup that you have for starting seeds, like you said, it's it's a controlled atmosphere. You're taking care. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> You're taking care of the the, the plants uh, to the point that they need that they'll be able to sprout properly. And then once they do sprout, you're letting them get strong enough to the point where they can be ready and to go outside. Because obviously, mm -hmm. if you planted a seedling right outside, it's very they're very fragile. They're very fragile. Yeah. So it could not withstand certain climates or certain temperatures. Uh, yeah, temperature is a climate. <laughs> or they can't withstand like certain weather, like wind could just snap the plant right in half. So like if you have a, a, a strong enough plant uh, that can go right into the ground after the risk of your last frost, cold snap, whatever it is, that they can withstand those temperatures or weather um uh, then that's a it's a that's that's one of the big reasons that we start indoors, obviously, for the head start, and it's just getting your plants strong enough to be ready to go outside. So yeah. Uh, one more thing that works for us to help germinate is uh, heat mats. We'll put the heat mats underneath our seed trays, and that just like from the bottom, it'll just heat it, and it gives them a because. You want to talk about germination just real quick, what it is? Yeah, heat uh, germination is the seed sprouting and before it becomes a seedling that's sticking out of the ground. Um, so everything from you putting the seed into the ground to its first leaves emerging out of the ground. It's basically germination, but they need heat, moisture, and then sunlight after that. But heat and moisture are really the two main things with um, getting them to germinate and all seeds are different, but this also leads me into what I was going to say. Um, we are going to be doing a lot of tutorials. I'm going to be filming what I'm doing. You're going to be filming what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, planting different types of seeds and we'll go back and forth. If we think that it's more important to do a longer or if we think because the shorts, you can only get like a minute, I think. Right. Um, on YouTube. So, but if we think that it's more important to do something that's a little bit longer to explain further, we will do maybe a three to five minute video on YouTube and show you guys what it is step by step. Maybe the first couple we'll do step by step. And then after that, we can like reference different videos throughout and just say it's more similar to this than to this, things like that. But we will be showing you guys how to plant everything. Um, I'm planting tomatoes coming up soon, which <laughs> when you guys are seeing this is not soon. It's been a couple weeks, um, but that'll right, be so... up and carrots. I'll be starting in my greenhouse potatoes when we get those. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of tutorials and those mm -hmm. will all be on here. And I'm pretty sure we'll create a playlist of just starting different seeds. Right. So it's easier for you guys to find. So if you're listening on Spotify or Google Podcast, which we have it on both those, if you're listening and you want a more visual aspect of how to plant seeds and how we do it, um, we'll have it all on YouTube, a couple different tutorials on how to do that. So coming soon. And we'll have it on Instagram mm -hmm. as well. Um, we'll probably do the shorts on there just because it's three to five or three minutes max on Instagram. So just a lot easier to format everything and move things around and things like that. But right, we will be doing all of that and making it easy for you guys to find. We'll probably do highlights and different things like that. If we're doing it on stories, just a wide range of things to show you guys what we're doing and to hopefully help you guys start your own gardens. And yeah. Uh, Show yeah. us your seedlings because this is the time that seedlings are coming up when this is coming out. So take pictures, send them to us, tag us on your stories, tag us in a post, whatever. We want to see your seedlings. We are interested in seeing how you do things and sharing those options with other people. Exactly. Because we're so. gardeners ourselves and we really like to see plants and how people do it. <laughs> and we like to do it ourselves. So share yes. with us. <laughs> 
how you do it, what you're growing this garden season. But I think we covered everything. Yes, we covered everything. All right. Uh, so I think that's a wrap for today's episode. Uh, we hope it was helpful. Um, and if it wasn't, then we'll try to do better on another episode. So come back for more episodes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. See y'all later.